Hey guys, my name's Theo Bald Hedman and you're watching Southern Ingenuity. Today's video, I'm going to be making some modifications and improvements to one of my favorite homemade tools. I'm talking about my water level. Now I've used that thing for many years on a bunch of different projects, including this shop where I used it to get the foundation nice and level before construction and for setting the ceiling height above the concrete floor before the floor was ever poured. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how a water level works and how you can make one for yourself and share an interesting little historical theory that you may not have heard before. So don't go away, we'll get started right after this. Now for those who don't know, a water level is a device that's used to measure differences in elevation relative to a fixed plane of reference. And since water always settles to the lowest point and forms a perfectly level surface, we use the water surface as the fixed plane of reference. And it'll stay at that same elevation unless there's a change in the elevation of the containment vessel or a change in the volume of the water. Well, this water level definitely seen some better days. So I'm going to be replacing the vinyl tubing and the reservoir, and I'm going to add some legs to the back of a grade rod so it'll stand up right by itself. Now there's three main things that you're going to need to make a water level. You're going to need a reservoir, some clear flexible tubing, and a grade rod. The reservoir can be any sort of watertight container. Ideally it should be made of plastic. I'm going to use a five gallon bucket for mine. Now the tubing, I found that 3 8 inch clear vinyl tubing works really well because the water flows very easily through it. It's not too big and bulky and it's readily available in various links at a lot of your local hardware stores. Now the grade rod is what we use to measure the differences in elevation. And it's basically just a pole or a stick with a graduated scale of some sort attached to it. And it can be made from any sort of rigid pole such as a piece of conduit or a PVC pipe or even a two by two wooden board. I used a piece of one inch aluminum T-slot rail to make mine. Well the first part I'm going to be modifying is the grade rod. I'm going to install a quick connect fitting so I can easily disconnect it from the transfer tube. And I'm going to use a T-type fitting because it can be attached more securely than a 90 degree elbow type. fitting in place, I can now install the new tubing. So I'm going to use some pliers and a vice grip clamp to wedge the tubing securely into one of the slots on the T-slot rail. And a graduated scale can be something as simple as a ruler, yardstick, or a tape measure. It just needs to be attached to the grade rod in such a way to where it's easy to reference the level of the water inside the tube. This is the tape measure that I use for my graduated scale. It's just an old Taylor's tape measure that I cut and then sewed back together in a loop so that the starting end or the zero lines up at the 200 centimeter mark. The nuts on the end of these bolts are specially designed to fit inside the slots on the T-slot rail. I can lock them into position by simply tightening the bolt. Now this allows me to attach my tape measure to the side of the rod and then adjust its position higher or lower as need be. next thing we're going to have to do is insert one end of the tubing into the reservoir. And being that the outside diameter of the tube is 3 eighths of an inch, 
I'm gonna use an 11 30 seconds drill to drill a hole in the bucket. That way, the hole is slightly smaller than the tube and it'll create a watertight seal when you pull it through the hole. Cutting the tube in at a slight angle will make it easier to get started into the hole. Okay, now I'm gonna make some legs for the grade rod. I'm gonna do that so it'll stand up by itself and prevent the water from draining out of the reservoir. Now it's time to fill the reservoir. So I'm gonna add a little bit of green food color into the water to make it more visible inside the tube. And with the reservoir filled and resting at an elevated position, we can now connect the rest of the transfer tubing and purge the air from it. All right, here's where everything starts to come together. Water will always settle to the lowest point and form a perfectly level surface. Here you can see the shadow of the water inside the bucket. Notice how the water in the tube settles to the same level as the water in the bucket. As you raise or lower the grade rod, the water always returns to level. And here's how we can make use of that. In this animation, the blue rectangle will represent our reservoir. The red line will represent the elevation of the water surface, or the water line, in the reservoir and the transfer tube. The black line will be the sloped surface of the ground that we're wanting to measure. The yellow arrows are going to be our grade rods. So at point A, we can see that the ground surface is eight units of measure below the water line. At point B, the ground surface is six units of measure below the water line. And at point C, it's four units below the water line. So we can easily see by this that point B is two units higher than A, and point C is four units higher than A. And that's how you use a water level to measure elevation. 
Typically when I use my water level, I'll measure everything relative to a particular starting point. And to do that, I zero my scale at that starting point. I let the water settle in the tube, and then I'll adjust my scale to where the zero mark is even with the water line. This makes it really quick and easy to see each difference in elevation relative to that initial starting point. Here I'm going to see how much slope there is on the concrete slab in front of my shop. So first, I'll zero the scale at my starting point near the entrance door. Then I move to the opposite end of the slab and check the reading there. After the water settles, we can see that it's 13 centimeters lower than where I started. Now the concept of the water level is not something new. It's been theorized that the ancient Egyptians used that same basic principle over 4,000 years ago to level the bases of the pyramids to within 5 eighths of an inch. Theory has it that they cut channels in the bedrock in a grid pattern and then flooded them with water. And being that the surface of the water would be smooth and flat, all they had to do to get their bases level was measure up from the surface of the water. I thought that was pretty interesting. Don't know if it's true, but it's pretty interesting. If you got any questions about what I did with the water level, be sure to drop them in the comments. I'll answer as many as I possibly can. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. So until next time, I'm Theobald Hedman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.